forgive me, White Lotus. Ah, oh, it, it was fun. I'm only too pleased to help, and I'm in despair. Exactly, oh, my dear sir. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Well, Francis? A small matter, Henry, a small matter. Nevertheless, I detect the sound of distant thunder. It is my distasteful duty to speak of Dodgson again. Oh, he's been attending the theatre in London. I gave him permission. <laughs> come, come, Francis. It all depends which way you want to go. You like duchesses, he prefers the theatre. In his case, an innocent diversion. He has many. His latest literary impertinence is a poem, if you please, addressed to the Queen, suggesting that the bell, our bell, Rick Tom, be removed after 200 years. Where's it being published? It hasn't yet. For all we know, he was planning to recite it to the Queen when she arrives. The man's mad. Downright dangerous. Judge for yourself. How did you come by this? Oh found its way to me. Such things often do, somehow. Shall we send for him? No, no, I'll attend to it presently. Presently? He's out there capering with your children. Still Alice. Alice, I can't help it. There's a fly on my nose. There are no flies in China. Dragons, griffins. Now, conceal the string in the grass, just as we planned. And I then take my place among you heathens. So, I now count ten. That is, I shall grunt ten times under my breath, precisely as we practiced it. You ready? But, Mr. Dodson. No buts, no changes. Eyes on the lens. You ready? Mm -hmm. Papa, we are Chinese! Charming costumes. Yes, they were lent me by a theatrical friend. Just a moment, Dobson. I want a word with you. I gather you've been thinking of leaving Oxford. Oxford's an anchor, you know, Dobson. Without it, you may be battered by the four winds. I should be very sad indeed to think of your drifting away without once stopping to think how in the world you could ever get back again. But perhaps you don't feel like that. Oh, yes, I do. Dear. All of the children becoming tiresome. On the contrary. I don't want to leave Oxford. Only... Only... No, nothing ever changes here. If it did, it wouldn't be Oxford any longer. Great Tom, for example. I gather you'd suggest some change there. You know, it was a gift from Charles II. Charles II hasn't personally been uh, uh, disturbed by it since 1685. You consider it a noisy nuisance? Well, everyone does. Everyone says so in, in private. But we haven't the courage to tell the sovereign. Exactly, sir. And uh, I think somebody should, after 200 years. Very well, then. You tell her yourself when she visits us next week. Girls, Lorena, Edith, and Alice. Lorena, Edith, and Alice. He writes Greek lexicons and has a collection of incunabula in his library. Incunabula? Old books. to come at once. Most important. It concerns the arrangement of the tongues. 
And by the way, I think it would be more orderly if the children remained in their rooms. children, sir, they'll be dreadfully disappointed not being present. If they promise faithfully to behave... Oh, impossible, Dodson. They'll have to stay in their rooms. But don't worry, they'll have an excellent view of the proceedings. I say, Dodson, if what I hear is true, our ears will be grateful to you. I've suffered in that bell for 18 years. Present the dean, Dr. Little. How do you do? And how are Lorena, Edith, and Alice, Dr. Little? Very well, thank you, ma'am. I am honored that Your Majesty shows an interest in my children. May I present Mr. Smith of the Faculty Literary Humaniores? Our lecturer in mathematics, Mr. Charles Dodson. Otherwise known as Lewis Carroll. I've read some of your verse in the Illustrated News. Charming, perfectly charming. And what is the subject of your latest poem? Um, it concerns tradition. It's a poem about the bell. Our bell of Christchurch, Great Tom. Yes, that magnificent bell. It is stimulating to know that come what may, Great Tom will ring throughout the ages. Come to think of it, nothing quite so impressive in the whole university as the voice of Great Tom is there. <laughs> Will I have a tea? Ah, tea. We shall be very pleased. And after that, we should like to go to the library and see your collection of incunabula. You'll see the Queen's carriage straight ahead of you as it drives back across the bridge. The Queen herself is still at the house. Yes, but in the library. We've seen the library dozens of times. Not with the Queen in it. Precisely. That's why I couldn't possibly tell you a story there. A story? A story about a little girl named Alice. I don't want to hear it. What does Alice do? She visits a strange land where strange people do strange things. All right, I won't tell it. Yes, tell it, tell it. No. The eyes apparently have it. Then I hope there's some animals in it. And nonsense. What could be pleasanter? 
Very well. It happened like this. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. A white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. Burning with curiosity, she ran after him. She was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole. How late it is getting. What will the Queen say?
crushing paint over me like that. I couldn't help it. Seven jogged my elbow. That's right, Five. Always lay the blame on others. You better not talk. I heard the Queen say only yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. What for? That's none of your business, too. I'm sure the Queen would be interested in what you are doing. Why are you painting those roses? Well, the fact is, you see, sir, this here ought to have been a red rose tree. And we put a white one in by mistake. And if the Queen was to find it out, we should have all our heads cut off. So you see, sir. Yes, I see. You won't tell the Queen, sir. She'll have us executed, sir. Please, sir, you were once in our shoes. But I was clever enough to get out of them. And today I play croquet with the Queen. I was the very least of the very largest litter of the very poorest family in the wood. My troubles never ceased, and my life was very bitter, till I learned the knack of grabbing what I could. If I Woman say day is night. I thought what an awful dunce. To say that day is night is silly. I'll tell her so at once. But when I saw that the woman was the queen, the case was not the same. But she said it once again. Yes. And I cried, Your Majesty. Yes. I absolutely agree with you. That's what they
brown ears and whiskers. If you please, sir. by the fire purring. How picturesque. How very picturesque. By the fire purring. Purring? Did you say purring? Yes. Purring. Dinah's a cat! capital of London. How exasperating. I know I shall catch my death of cold. What? What was that? Hey, 
to that wave Where with me. Where did that come right. from? Lost tidal wave. It was ten years ago. It was a cloud burst. A tidal wave. Cloud burst. Tidal wave. The question is, how shall we get dry? Do I hear a motion? One at a time, please. Why, one at a time? All at the same time goes faster. We'll all speak when we please. One at a time. Don't be like you. I'm not going to 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 be like you. I'm not going
Who is it to be? Volunteers! creatures chase after me so. I had to kick Bill a little, and I didn't mean to turn on that flood. Forest. What 
curious, sir. Curious, sir. Who are you, madam? I hardly know, sir, just at present. Explain yourself. I can't explain myself, sir, because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see, not at all, ma'am. I'm afraid I can't put it much more clearly. Being so many different sizes in a day is very confusing. What size do you want to be? Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you don't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height. It's a very good height indeed. Three inches, wretched. Oh, I wish you creatures wouldn't be so easily offended. You? Who are you? I don't know. I can't seem to remember things. Can't seem to remember things. Recite, you are old, Father William. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very fine. And yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? It is right. In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might linger my brain. But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. Who are old to say that you, one would hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balanced an eel on the end of your nose. What makes you so awfully clever? I have answered three questions, and that is enough. Said his father, so give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be up or I'll kick you downstairs. Be up or I'll kick you downstairs. An invitation from the Queen to play croquet. From the Queen? An invitation for the Duchess to play croquet. 
Queen's tarts, by any chance? Easter uh, won't tell Her Majesty. Tell her what? You didn't steal them. Haven't you heard? They were stolen by Australia. There's no sort of use in docking. That for two reasons. First, because I'm on the same side of the door as you are. Secondly, because they're making such a noise inside, no one could possibly hear, hear you. Perhaps you can tell me. There might be some sense in your knocking if we had the door between us. For instance, if you were inside, you might dock and I could let you out, you know. It's really dreadful the way all you creatures argue. I shall sit here, here, till tomorrow. Or next day, maybe. How am I to get in? Are you to get in at all? That's the first question, you know. But what am I to do? Anything you like. It's enough to drive one crazy.
Now I'm restored to the court. Now for the glory that's mine. He's certainly using too much red pepper. into a pig, my dear. I'll have nothing more to do with you. Mind now. <laughs> if he had grown up, he would have been a dreadfully ugly child. But he makes a rather handsome pig. lives a hatter, and in that direction lives a march hare. Visit either you like. They are both mad. But I want to visit the Queen. I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. I'm mad? You must be, or you wouldn't have come here. Well, how do you know you're mad? To begin with, a dog's not mad. You grant that? I suppose so. Well, then, a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. But I growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I'm mad. Do you play croquet with the Queen today? I should like to very much. You'll see me there. Curious and curious. By the by, what became of the baby? It turned into a pig. I thought it would. Let me see. The March Hare lives that way. Did you say pig or fig? I said pig. And I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly. All right. I've seen many a cat without a grin, but a grin without a cat. Remarks. It's very rude. Have some lemonade. I don't see any lemonade. There isn't any. <laughs> <laughs> then it wasn't very simple of you to offer it. It's not very simple of you to sit down without being invited. Is a raven like a writing desk? That's a riddle. I believe I can guess it. Do you mean you think you can find out the answer to it? Exactly so. You should say what you mean. I do say what I mean. At least I mean what I say, and that's the same thing. It's not the same thing a bit. Why? You might just as well say, I see what I eat, is the same as I eat what I see. 
I guess as well say that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. Do I just as well say that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe? It is the same with you. Oh. Let's all move up one place. What day of the month is it? It's four. Oh, two days long. <laughs> he went mad last March, you know. It was at a great concert given by the Queen. I was singing. Little, little, little man, how I wonder what your plan is. hardly finished the first verse when the Queen bawled out, he's murdering the time, off with his head. How dreadfully savage. Oh, but I did murder the time. And ever since then, it's always been tea time. <laughs> on where you want to go. I don't care where. Then it doesn't matter which way you go. So long as I get somewhere. Oh, you're sure to do that if you only walk long enough. Long enough? If you only walk long enough. I have got somewhere. It's the bottom of the sea. <laughs>
What a lovely day for croquet and for chopping off a few heads. What's your name, child? My name is Alice, so please, Your Majesty. And who are these? Turn them over. Get up. Leave off that, you make me giddy. What have you been doing here? May it please Your Majesty. Oh, I see. Off with their heads. Can you play croquet? Yes. Yes, Your Majesty. Then play. <laughs> Either you or your head must be off, and that in about half no time. Take your choice. Play the game. <laughs> off with his head. I can't cut off the head unless there's a body to cut it from. I never had to do such a thing before, and I'm not going to begin at my time of life. Anything that has a head could be beheaded. All I say is, if something isn't done about it in less than no time, I'll have everybody executed, all round. There, my dear, its head is off. How do you like the Queen? Not at all. She's so extremely... ...likely to win that it's hardly worthwhile finishing the game. You may have a cherry tart, my child. Why, there are no tarts there, Your Majesty. Nonsense! There must be! I made them myself! But they are gone, my dear. Of course the tarts are gone, Your Majesty. They have been stolen. S stolen? My tarts stolen? Someone shall suffer for this. Off with his head! 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 So oh, we are entirely depopulated, my dear. Hadn't you better find out who did? Yes, yes! Who did it? Who did it? She did it! Off with her head! <laughs> She has to stand trial first. Why do we need a trial? All I want is to chop off her head. Not without a trial. Fair play, you know. She shall stand trial. And then we'll chop off her head. Yes, that's fair. Up, lazy thing. <laughs> what fun. Come on. Can 
Who are you? I was a real turtle. Now I'm a mock turtle. What is a mock turtle? The thing mock turtle soap is made of. After that, I cut more bread and butter. Here, here. 
You may go. mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character, but said I could not swim. He sent them word I had not gone. We know it to be true. If she should push the matter on, what would become of you? I gave her one, they gave him two. You gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. If I or she should chance to be involved in this affair, he trusts you to set them free exactly as we were. My notion was that you had been, before she had this fit, an obstacle that came between him and ourselves and it. Don't let him know she liked the best, for this must ever be a secret kept from all the rest between yourself and me. That's the most important piece of evidence. And you know what that means. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. Let the jury consider the verdict. No, let them consider the charge. The Queen of Hearts, she baked some tarts all in a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole the tarts and took them quite away. It's perfectly true what she says. The Knave of Hearts did steal the tarts. He did? Only she is the Knave of Hearts. Then who are you? I am Alice. She is the Knave of Hearts. Hold your tongue! I won't! Off with her head! 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 Who cares for you? You're nothing but a pack of cards. <laughs> The whole pack rose up into the air and came flying down upon her. She gave a little scream, half of fright and half of anger. Oh. What happened to Alice? Well, Alice found herself lying on the bank, with her head in the lap of her sister, who was gently brushing away some dead leaves that had fluttered down from the trees upon her face. Oh, I've had such a curious dream, said Alice. No, no, it was real. It was real. But, Mr. Dodge, it was all real, wasn't it? Naturally. 